The next presentation is titled, Are They Ready to Handle Anaphylaxis? A study among pre-intern medical graduates of three universities in Sri Lanka. It is presented by Dr. C. N. Vijay Kohn, Dr. A. D. A. Fernando, Dr. S. Zizanayaka, Dr. Ivetta Singh, Dr. M. Gunodhana, Dr. G. Minwan, Dr. P. Jawadhan, and Dr. P. M. Tenwara. Presented by Dr. Ivetta Singh. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I am Dr. Indika Vetta Singh, representing the Department of Pharmacology, University of Sri Jayavadarpura. And I am here to talk about our study, which is titled, Are They Ready to Handle Anaphylaxis? A study which was conducted among pre-intern medical graduates of three universities in Sri Lanka. So as we all know, uh, early recognition and management is crucial in minimizing, and minimizing the morbidity and mortality due to anaphylaxis, which is a medical emergency. And pre-interns will soon become the first contact doctors who would be primarily responsible for diagnosing and managing anaphylaxis in the hospital setting. They will be the house officers in the state hospitals. So the general objective was to determine how pre-interns, thank you. So the general objective was to determine how pre-interns qualified with MBBS from Sri Lankan universities perceived anaphylaxis. So here we assess the knowledge regarding the triggers of anaphylaxis, the diagnosis and the management of anaphylaxis. And we also assess the self-confidence regarding the diagnosis and management of anaphylaxis. So this was a cross-sectional study. It included pre-interns who graduated with MBBS in 2019. Consecutive sampling was used. Data collection was used using a self-administered questionnaire. The questionnaire consisted of two false questions, single answer MCQs and open-ended questions. This is an example of the case scenarios that were used for the diagnosis of anaphylaxis. And these are the questions regarding the management of anaphylaxis. So here we come to the results. So 39%, uh, sorry, the sample size was 392 with a response rate of 88%. The mean age of the population was 27.3 years. And 63% of the participants were females. So only 16.8% identified all stated anaphylaxis triggers. And the knowledge regarding allergens such as wheat, such as green leaves, green gram, coconut, and chickpeas was poor. And the knowledge regarding allergens such as soy, sesame, and wheat products was low. Rice is not known to cause anaphylaxis. However, 38% of the population were under the wrong impression that it causes anaphylaxis. Also, inhaled allergens rarely cause anaphylaxis, but majority of the participants were under the impression that it causes anaphylaxis. So surprisingly, very surprisingly, 16% of the population did not know that there is a set criteria to diagnose anaphylaxis. And 11% of the population did not know that anaphylaxis can occur without hypertension. So only 4.6% correctly diagnosed all 10 case scenarios. So here we have the case scenarios and as you can see, question 4 and question 9 were poorly answered. So I would like to uh, read out question 4. So question go 4 goes as this. A patient with a known history to prawns develops vomiting, dairy, and hypotension uh, one hour after eating sarana, which is a green leafy vegetable. So most of the uh, participants went with allergy for some reason, but it is actually anaphylaxis as two systems are involved. Question 9 uh, goes as this. Uh, a patient uh, with a history of allergy to ibuprofen develops uh, acute onset wheezing with no other signs and symptoms after taking diclofenac sodium. So most of the study population went with anaphylaxis for some reason, but the correct answer is allergy because there's only one system involved. There's no hypotension involved. So the mean score for case diagnosis was 7.38 out of 10. And there was a significant difference based on the final MBBS results category and the university. So higher the class in the final MBBS, better the score in the case diagnosis. And it was statistically significant. The same goes with the university. University 3 had a uh, higher uh, mark than the other two universities, and it was statistically significant. And also statistical analysis showed that final MBBS results category and the university were independent predictors of diagnosis score, and this was also statistically significant. So 98% of the participants uh, correctly answered that the first drug to administer was 1 in 1,000 adrenaline. However, only 78% knew the correct adult dose of adrenaline and only 54% knew the correct pediatric dose of adrenaline, only 
so only uh, so 21 percent of the population were under the wrong impression that the best site to administer intramuscular adrenaline was the deltoid muscle 22 percent of the population did not know how to position a patient during anaphylaxis and surprisingly 50 percent of the population did not know that follow-up care is needed for a patient who has had anaphylaxis. This is very uh, troubling because it is the house officers that are responsible for writing the diagnosis cards and the discharges and arranging follow-up on most situations. So then we come to the management of anaphylaxis. The mean score for the management of anaphylaxis is 16.9. Once again, there's a significant difference based on the final MBBS results category, the university, as well as the personal history for allergy. So again, higher the class in the final MBBS, better the score. Uh, for the management of anaphylaxis. It is statistically significant, as you can see. Uh, again, statistical, anal statistical analysis showed that the final MBBS results category was an independent predictor of management score. 80%, so now we come to the uh, self-confidence, assessing the self-confidence. So 80% of the population were confident in diagnosing anaphylaxis. 62% were confident in managing anaphylaxis. And the main reason for the lack of confidence in managing anaphylaxis was that they did not have hands-on experience, even though they had seen an emergency management of anaphylaxis. 38% have given that answer. So uh, from our study, we have noted that University 2 had a higher level of self-confidence in diagnosing and managing anaphylaxis when compared with the other universities. And this was statistically significant. Also, the self-confidence in management was higher in males. There was also a positive correlation between the diagnosis co that is the knowledge regarding the diagnosis and the knowledge regarding the management of anaphylaxis and the self-confidence. That's a positive correlation which is statistically significant. So just to recap, 11% of the population did not know that anaphylaxis can occur without hypotension. 22% did not know the correct adult dose. 45% did not know the correct pediatric dose. And 50% did not know that follow-up care is necessary uh, after managing a patient with anaphylaxis. So even though the knowledge and perception in our study was not optimal, uh, we have seen that it is better than previous studies. As you can see, uh, the no knowledge regarding the adrenaline dose is far better than uh, how it has been assessed in previous studies among first contact doctors. So uh, these are the conclusions regarding our study. And we would like to uh, recommend the following. One, we would like to have an, uh, an island-wide study which in includes all the state universities in the country. The reason being, in our study, we have noted that a certain university has a higher level of knowledge in diagnosing and managing, as well as a higher level of self-confidence. So we want to see if this knowledge fluctuates among the universities, and if so, we need to address it. Number two, we would, like to, we would recommend a study to be conducted between pre-intern, comparing pre-intern doctors and post-intern doctors, to see if that hands-on experience has actually improved their level of self-confidence. Because if you could recall, the main reason for the lack of self-confidence was the absence of hands-on experience. And thirdly, uh, uh, we, from our study, we have concluded that higher the uh, knowledge in managing and diagnosing anaphylaxis would lead to a higher level of self-confidence uh, regarding the management of anaphylaxis. So again, a greater emphasis should be pay, uh, put in the curriculum uh, when teaching this and also students should be informed about the both the local and the international guidelines because as you could see 16 percent of the population did not know that there was a specific criteria to uh, manage anaphylaxis so that concludes my uh, presentation thank you thank you dr with Singh. any questions we have a few minutes <coughs> yeah. Uh, yes, madam. So uh, we still haven't implemented it, but we are having discussion. So one is for the students. We are uh, planning to have an additional period where we discuss the case scenarios. All this time it has been only theory. Uh, but here we are going to discuss some case scenarios as you saw in the question. So they apply their knowledge into diagnosing. Uh, also, we'll be recommending the, there are uh, journals and uh, the, the RESAS guidelines, the NHS guidelines, which have a set criteria for the management of anaphylaxis. And for diagnosing anaphylaxis, there are three criteria. So once you implement those while going through these uh, uh, case scenarios, that will really brush up the student's knowledge. Okay. Uh, something additional is that you haven't got any information regarding teachers or you know, their, their lectures. Their perceptions were not considered at any point through any other of these things. I think this is only for 
yes we only assess the knowledge of, yeah uh, of do the you students. think that there may have been an impact uh, from what the teachers have been perceiving with regard to its importance yes that that's a very good point sir that could also be a, f- a future uh, study which we could conduct because, because as you as we saw that the knowledge and the self confidence differed between university so that might have been due to the teaching as well we have not analyzed the teachings right. yeah. okay. all right thank you okay.